the girl in the spider's web. So The Girl in the Spider's Web is the newest Fide Alvarez movie. It's directed by him and written by him and two other people. And it tells the story about Alexander or Salander. I forget her name. But it tells the story about Salander and she has to go get this very powerful de uh, tra file that you know it could set off nukes. And she's got to get it and bring it back to the guy who created it. Because he doesn't want the American government or the Swedish government to have it. He wants to destroy his monster that he made. But when she gets it, somebody else gets it from her. And they want to use it to blow up the world. It's basically like a James Bond movie. But before I get into my negatives, let me go over my positives. I will say for the most part, this movie uh, is very well directed. I love Fide Alvarez. He directed Evil Dead. He directed uh, Don't Breathe. And I think he's going to make Don't Breathe 2. And he usually writes and directs his movie. But he like wrote this movie with like two other people. And this movie is also based off of a book series, I believe. And this is like a sequel. I haven't even seen the original, The Girl and the Dragon Tattoo. But... I'm, I'm not sure if I'll ever check it out, but I'm curious to go look at it. But just know that you don't even have to really see that movie to even get what's going on here. Like, I don't think there's anything in that movie that I needed to know. I was just like, all right, this girl needs to go get this file, and then it's for this. I want to point out that this guy, he's like the, the, the creator of this, like, bomb. He has, like, this YouTube channel, and it's like this big old tech lab thing with all these... I would assume that he would have a lot of subscribers, but he only had like 140 or something. But this movie was shot very well. I mean, there was a lot of good visuals. It looked like they were working harder to make good visuals than a good story. It was just like a lot of great visuals. Camera work. Yeah, there's a lot of good camera work in this movie. If she's like dazed or disoriented, like the camera like wobbles with her. Just like upgraded, upgrade by Lee Winnell. That's a good movie. And a good pacing, lots of good cinematography in this movie. Just basically the, the directing, cinematography, the lighting, all that was good. It was a gorgeous looking movie. I thought it was weird that, you know, she sports like a hoodie and like white paint on her face at the beginning of the movie. But then throughout the rest of the movie, she doesn't wear white paint. She's not like a warrior no more. So what was the white paint for? Why was she like all dressed up to go take this guy out? But on to my negatives. This movie suffers from what I call bad trailer syndrome all right the trailer ruins the whole fucking movie for you like everything i saw coming i was like this is gonna happen in this scene this is what's gonna happen here 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 like they even had the last like scene the major scene last scene in the trailer and when i saw it, i was like i fucking knew it even when you watch the trailer you're like i bet that's the end and it is this movie also suffers from the cliche of things happening at the last second or things just falling into place perfectly for this protagonist to make it as situations and the escape police and shit. She drives a bike on this ice that's just ice enough for her, the weight of her vehicle to not like sink and crash through the ice. It's just, there are lots of really eye moments in this movie. Towards the end of this movie, this car crashes and it like flips a thousand times and just hits these trees and just goes from like 60 to zero, smashing it to the tree. And the woman in the back seat, who probably wasn't even buckled up, she just kind of has like a, a wound on her stomach, she's bleeding. But she immediately gets out of the car. She's fine. She's walking. Just perfect. I felt like there were scenes in this movie that just didn't even need to be there. And like, why is this even happening? They answered this like journalist. I'm sure he's from the first movie. It kind of felt like, I bet he was in the other movie. And that's why there's like all this chemistry between them. But anyways, they have this journalist. And he has this love affair with this woman who's married. She says it like, I can't have sex with you tonight because I'm married. I Or I have to go have dinner with my husband. But she tells this journalist that... He, she just wants him to start writing. And by the end of the movie, when he's about to start, like by in the middle of the movie, when he's like trying to investigate so he can write, she's like discouraging him from investigating because she's pissed off that he's investigating Salander. It's like, what do you want, woman? He's trying to start writing and now you're discouraging him. And why is it that he is, why is it that she's married? Is that important? Like, why? Why? I, I think Salander, or whatever the fuck her name is, Claire Voy, should punish her. Why doesn't she just tase her in the vagina like she did that guy in the balls at the beginning? Because she's cheating on her husband with this journalist. So why don't you give her the same treatment? All right? That's a double standard. But then, like, even at, like, at the end of the movie, he's like about to write like she wanted. And then he deletes his whole story. It's like, why the hell did you even write it in the first place? He just deletes it all because he just he's cho it's basically like he's choosing her, a married woman, over writing a story, what he's paid to do. It's like, no, I choose the woman who's married. Why does she have to be married? It makes no sense. It doesn't make his character likable. He's fucking a married woman. Now, there's this little kid in the movie. He's like the thing that... The thing. The kid that the bad guys need because he knows the answer to the security question for all the nukes in the world, basically, or something. And 
he, they establish that he's very smart. He beats Clairvoy at a game of chess in less than a minute, which I saw coming a mile away. But even though his dad's dead and he knows he's dead and he tells Clairvoy like, yeah, I know my dad's dead, but I'm not going to cry about it because my dad told me to put things in the past and ignore the past. So he moves on, right? But then he gets a phone call and it says, dad's calling me, huh? And he answers it. Dumbass. Why? Just so the bad guys can know where he is now and like get the location on his cell phone. He answers the phone saying that my dead dad's calling me. You think he'd be smart, but now he's not. Just, oh my god, why? Why? You established that this kid was a fucking genius. He memorized numbers that have like 30 random digits in it. And now he's answering phone calls from a dead father. Why? This movie's also lackluster when it comes to action. But I do, I want to give a little positive out that it, it was good choreographed. And it actually made her not look so freaking invincible. It's kind of annoying when like a protagonist just can kick ass and nothing ever hurts them. She gets hurt in this movie and she receives some blows. And so I, I'll give that as a positive. But it's not really that like it's not an action movie. It's more just like a story driven James Bond movie. It's just another James Bond evil wants to have nukes and blow up the world. And then it has that little stupid little cliche twist. Here's a spoiler. All right. Just don't don't see the movie at theaters. Rent it at Redbox. All right. So. But here, spoiler, you got this Swedish woman who works for like the the Swedish government and she wants this thing because America doesn't deserve it, you know, the nukes, and she's working for the bad woman. And she walks into this meeting to retrieve it from the bad guys that she's working with, with one security guard who gets killed and she's like shocked that she's being portrayed by bad people. You're a fucking idiot. Just lots of stupid character decisions and things that you're like, that would never work. That would never happen. Wow, lucky you. That lined up perfect. I just hate when that happens in movies. The only good thing about this movie is it looks gorgeous. It's beautifully shot. Fide Alvarez did an amazing job. But Fide Alvarez deserved a better movie than this. He should have just worked on Don't Breathe 2 instead. I hope he's doing that next. This movie was okay, but like, is it worth seeing at the theaters? No, it's not really that good. It's just generic. That's the word I would use to describe this movie. It's just generic. So when it comes to the girl in the spider's web, I would say you should just check this out at Redbox. Those are my thoughts on the girl in the spider's web. Have you seen this movie? Let me know what you thought about it in the comments below. And as always, make sure to hit that like button. And to subscribe by clicking on my beautiful cartoon face in five seconds to see more. And until next time, I'll feed us things.